Please be advised that this show may not be appropriate for children under 13. And now, your prayer intentions with author Peter and Jimmy. Hello and welcome again to Your Prayer Intentions. We're very happy to spend this time with you praying for and praying with your prayer intentions. Well, this is week six of our 10-week and 10-episode series on what we have lost as a post-Christian society by abandoning the Ten Commandments. Uh, We've finished the first five commandments as of uh, last week, and this week we are going to talk about the Sixth Commandment. And I'm going to jump right into the Sixth Commandment this week and then do the prayer intentions afterwards, and then next week we'll probably flip it around just to give it a little bit of variety. Well, the Sixth Commandment has to be one of the least popular (laughs) of the commandments in one respect. And I recall Our Lady of Fatima saying that it is the commandment that causes more people to go to hell than any other. It's not the biggest sin, pride being the biggest, deadliest sin. But lust is the other one. And the sixth commandment is, Thou shalt not commit adultery. And if there is a commandment that is less popular with the human race, I can't think of it. Now, the thing about this commandment beyond anything else, is that it is, of all the commandments out there, probably the one that is most contrary to instinct, with the possible exception of covetedness, which we'll get into much later on. In that humans as animals, and let's face it, we're all animals, we're all creatures, instinctively have a desire to mate, and men, of course, have an instinctive desire for women. So of all the commandments, this is probably, especially for men, the hardest to keep. The hardest one. And over the years, you know, you've seen, there have been saints who have said, when dealing with this, with this type of sin, just absolve them and go from there and so forth. But what society has lost from the abandonment of the Sixth Commandment, and not just from it in practice, because in practice, as I've said, it is a very hard commandment to keep. And that involves all the things about about the commandment. But we've lost the meaning behind what this does. And we talked a little bit about this last week when we were talking about the Fifth Commandment and death and abortion. But the Sixth Commandment, especially when dealing with abortion, goes with it. Think about where we were as a society 50, 60 years ago when abortion was illegal, when prostitution was illegal everywhere, where pornography was illegal almost everywhere. Think about where we were and think about what the standards were for men and women, and especially for men. Men, in order to gain a wife, in order to gain a sexual partner, were expected to make something of themselves. Men, if you wanted to get a wife, you had to work at it. You you had to be a person who was worthy of marriage. You had to put some effort into it. And the reason why you had to be worthy of this is because, and I'm going to be I'm going to be speaking very blunt here. If a man wanted a woman sexually, it was expected to be for marriage. And that's why you would have the shotgun woman, a woman who was pregnant, a man was expected to marry him. You were going to have the marriage there. And when you have that incentive, You make yourself a better man. You try harder. You do these things. So you make a better man. And a better man becomes a better father. And a better father raises better children. Think of what we have lost once that requirement has gone away. And I actually argue, and I've argued this many times in secular settings, that when it comes to the sexual revolution... Men won. 
Let's face it, men won the sexual revolution. And let me explain this very briefly. In 1955, a man was expected to be the breadwinner of the house, to work very hard to, in order to provide a living for women and children, was expected to not have sex outside of marriage and not be able to have sex without marriage. So a man was in a position where if he wanted a woman, a woman and a family, he had to get himself married and he had to stay in that situation. There was an incentive system. Look at where men and women are today. We've come to the age of people using abortion as birth control, people using birth control. With once birth control became big, and once it was primarily a thing for women, for birth control, suddenly the onus was off the man. Suddenly, the idea that, oh, well, I can now have sex. I don't have to worry about getting a child. I don't have to take responsibility. It's actually very amusing lately uh, because of the new Texas law, which allows citizens to sue uh, abortion providers if they provide abortion after a heartbeat is viable, after six weeks or so. How you have all these kinds of celebrities saying, well, if you do that, we're just going to refuse sex, blah, blah, blah. Well, this is where we were. This is what this is actually the way it's designed. This is how it's supposed to be. In fact, take a look at if you look at uh, the conception of Christ. What was Saint Joseph thinking of doing before God told him, "No, don't worry about this. This is my doing." Saint Joseph was getting ready to divorce Mary quietly because the norms were not being followed because this was not considered the right way. And think of what this has happened to women trying to find a husband and trying to find a good husband by throwing away the commandment against adultery, by ignoring the sexual norms, by ignoring what society had built up over hundreds and thousands of years. You've now put men in a position where they feel they don't need a wife. In fact, to some degree, some of the rules that have come have made marriage dangerous. Men, I don't want to deal with this. I don't need to get married in order to satisfy my lusts. And if you look at the rise of pornography, the rise of prostitution, you see more of the same. Thus, you take away the civilizing force. And remember, this is not an easy thing. This is not an easy thing. Remember when Jesus told these things to the disciples, the disciples are saying, this is very hard. And he's over there, not, so, not all people can accept this. Some people aren't for marriage. Some people by the nature. Some people for the Lord and so forth. It's not an easy thing to begin with. But once you took that away, look at where society has gone. And not only just for the woman trying to you know, find the right man, but how many times do we run into the situation with fatherless children, absentee fathers? What has absentee fathers done for people? What has divorce done for people? We have generations. One of the reasons why we're seeing small upsurges in marriage again is because the children of divorce know its cost. Because they've lived through it. They've seen what it costs. And how many times, and here's, here's another point, how many times did people, not wanting to, you know, given the choice, do I do something illegal? Do I abandon this, the, this woman who I've gotten pregnant in the 70s and 60s, did the right thing, and now I have children and grandchildren. How many of those generations are gone? We basically destroyed generations, not just through abortion, but through the short-circuiting of the family. And all of this comes from not 
caring about the sixth commandment. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Sex is for marriage and for your spouse. This is what the church has taught. This is what the church has consistently taught. And until the 1930s, when the Church of England started to turn away from this and started to go towards birth control, and then the rest of the Protestant world rushed to follow suit, this wasn't the case. It's not just what was abandoned recently. If you go back 100 years and you look at Protestant doctrine and Catholic doctrine on this subject, they were not far off. But the change came, and once, the, once you took this change, once you made this difference, then the price came. And people thought, oh, well, this is not going to make a difference. This is going to make things better. This is going to make things more wonderful. It doesn't. Now, I've been married 33 years, and I cannot imagine my life without my wife. I cannot, the concept of not having a wife, just, I just, it just, I can't, or not wanting a wife even, just doesn't relate, I can't relate to it. But you have people now who do not understand the values of having a wife or of having a husband, of having that that spouse of the opposite sex to bring that other perspective to you. And again, you see people trying to throw things away because you're always people always chasing, always chasing. Thinking, oh, it's going to be better this time. It's going to be better with this one. And I never forget years ago, I had a friend who was interested in a man, and she was interested in a married man. And because she, and she came to me for advice on him. And right away, the thought came to me, I'm not going to give this person just the advice that this is wrong. Because a person who can figure out that this is wrong isn't going to come to me for advice on this. And I made a very simple argument, and an argument that worked, is this man has a wife and children and has all these years committed to that, that wife and children. And you're going to go off and run off with him. If he's willing to do that with that wife and children that he has all these years commitment with, how long is it going to take for him to find another woman that he decides he likes more and run off with her when you don't have that same commitment together? If he was willing to run away with that stronger commitment, why would he stick? What makes you think he's going to stick with yours? And that worked. And that's the other half of this. The, it's sort of like what a friend of mine once said. He's in a professor, was in a nursing profession, and was saying that, you know, I, went, I left this place because it was tough, and then the next place I went had the same problems, had the same problems. Well, some things are consistent. Men and women are different. There are, it takes, there's an effort to living together. There's an effort to being a spouse. It's work. Dealing with any other person who doesn't think like you, who doesn't agree with you on certain things, is work. The little things that annoy people. My wife, she is annoyed when I leave lights on. That's her thing with my wife. I'm annoyed when she puts pans inside of pans because it gets the bottom pan dirty. But those are little things. But when you don't have that commitment, when you don't have that marriage... Those little things can become big things, and you run away. And I always like to close talks about marriage with this line, because this is something that I'm sure you have heard over and over again from our modernist friends, saying, well, marriage is just a piece of paper. I don't need to get married. It's just a piece of paper. And I say, fine. Show me your car loan. Show me your mortgage. Show me your insurance. Do you get, have someone fix your porch without an estimate? Do you have someone do electrical work without an estimate? Do you, how many things do we take in writing? Our mortgage, our car loans, our bank account. You would not in a million years say, oh, you don't have to show me my pay stub. It's just a piece of paper. You don't have to show me my lease. It's just a piece of paper. You don't have to show me our mortgage agreement. That's just a piece of paper. You would not do this for any of these other things 
And yet for marriage, a commitment that's supposed to be for life, that's just a piece of paper? Something that you live with every single day? It's a lie. It has been told to people. And it's a lie we have to break free of if our society is going to be what it should be. And that's the end of my talk on the Sixth Commandment. On the Seventh Commandment tomorrow, I should say next week. But now let's get to our prayer requests. We have several prayer requests here that we're going to do. And I remind you very quickly that the best way to get a prayer request to me is to go to the wqphradio.org prayer wall and post your prayer requests right there. You can also email us your prayer requests at wqph893 at comcast.net, wqph893 at comcast.net. And here are our prayer requests for this week. We again have a prayer request for the Kennedy family. We have a prayer request for those suffering from mental illness. We have a prayer request still out there for Father Peter in New Jersey, who is currently sick with COVID. We have a prayer request for Cardinal Burke, who's recovering from COVID. We have a prayer request for those oppressed by the devil. We have a prayer request for the Bigelow family that today is uh, having the funeral for their for Mark Bigelow, who died this week. We have a prayer request for Bob Belvedere. Bob Belvedere, uh, who is in the final stages of cancer. It does not look very good for Bob. We have a prayer request for Stephanie, who has just gotten married. And we have our standing prayer requests. We have a prayer request for uh, the Dominican Sisters of St. Cecilia's Intentions, who have a prayer request for Mary. We have a prayer request for Nancy. We have a prayer request for those who, the parishes in the area. We have a prayer request for those of you who donate to WQPH, and we are very grateful. If you care to be one of those people who donate to WQPH, feel free to go over to the WQPH website and hit donate because your monies keep us going. We have a prayer request for conversions. Actually, we have many prayer requests for conversions, (laughs) which remains our most popular prayer request. We have a prayer request for Father Joe. Prayer request for Father Joe. And we have a prayer request for Renee. Prayer request for Renee. And those are our prayer requests for this week. And now for all of these things, let us pray the second mystery of light since we talked about marriage today, which is the wedding of Canaan. And we will pray this in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The second mystery of light is the miracle at the wedding of Cana. We offer the Lord Jesus the seventh decade and honor thy miracle at Cana. And we ask of this through this mystery and through the intercession of thy Holy Mother, respect for our marital vows. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. 
Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners and now the hour of death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners and now the hour of death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and the hour of death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell. Lead all souls into heaven, especially those who are most in need of thy mercy. May the grace and mystery of the miracle at Cana come down to our souls. Amen. Now for those of you who are praying the indulgence calendar this week, the the indulgence calendar for the 11th is Deacon Kendall Boutwell. And I just noticed that I misspelled Deacon <laughs> on the indulgence calendar, which I guess, I, I guess we'll have to fix that. But you'll get the right, the right person there. So we will offer some prayers for the intentions of the Holy Father and for the intentions of the Pope Emeritus. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, as now, and ever shall be, a world without end. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now at the hour of our death. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in the day of battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke whom we humbly pray and do. Thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan, and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. And we pray this in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now, before we get to our closing prayer, I want to do a very quick plug. Tomorrow, on the 12th, there's going to be a pancake breakfast at St. Bernard's Parish at St. Kimmelis Church on Mechanic Street in Fitchburg, run by the Knights of Columbus after the 8 and 10 o'clock Mass. It's $5 free will offering. If you can't get tickets, Father there says he will provide some for you if you're short, if a little short on cash. Hope to see you there. I will be at one of those two, those two bre- breakfasts. I don't know if it's going to be after the 8 or 10 that I'll be there. Now our closing prayer. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. O God of mercy, as we reach out to those seeking you, send forth your Holy Spirit upon this station, this show, all those who listen to it and all those who carry it, to renew us in faith. Enable us to share the good news of the gospel with loving words and caring deeds so that those who have drifted away may be drawn to your church and follow the way of your Son, Jesus, who is the way, the truth, and the light. We make our prayer through Jesus our Lord. Amen. And we pray it in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. From all of us here at Your Prayer Intentions, we will see you next week. So goodbye, and God bless you all. On the WQPH Community Calendar. Now I'd like to throw in a quick promotion for something that's going on at St. Bernard's Parish and St. Camilla's Church. You might have noticed the little patio, Our Lady's Garden, which is a section of next to the statue of Our Lady in the back, which has a brick pattern of the cross and other bricks in there. It's a place where people pray and contemplate. An awful lot of people will park there and pray. And there are bricks with prayer requests that are donated in memory of various things there. Well, there's going to be a second section made, and the Knights of Columbus are offering the bricks again, the big gray bricks which are going to make up the second cross, and the other bricks that go around it. And through the end of September, the bricks are going to be half price. And that includes replica bricks, because there's some people that will put in a brick and then have a replica to take home for themselves. But all of those things are going to be half price. So if you get the $150 brick, that would normally be part of the cross, half price now. If you want to have a memorial brick for a loved one or for your family, included in Our Lady's Garden, you'll want to head down to St. Bernard's Parish and St. Camilla's Church. The brochures are there, or it's also listed in the bulletin. And you will be able to either make the order there or at the website. If you go to the website, it will automatically deduct the 50% price. The nice thing about the website is you get a chance to see the preview because you can either have just words or words in a symbol. So if you want to include a symbol, of course, that adjusts how many how many lines of words you can have on the brick. It's something that you can do there if you want to get involved with that. Check that out at St. Bernard's Parish at St. Camilla's Church in Fitchburg, Massachusetts. When you walk in, it'll... Brochures will be on the right. It'll say Our Lady's Garden. 
I'll direct you to the website. The half price offers through the end of September. Another wonderful thing that goes on at St. Bernard's at St. Camillus is adoration on Mondays and Tuesdays. Adoration begins as soon as the 8 o'clock mass finishes and runs till 4 o'clock. It may be interrupted if there's a funeral. If there's a funeral mass, the uh, Blessed Sacrament will be put away, the mass will take place, and the Blessed Sacrament will be re-exposed after mass. So another thing to check out there, Mondays and Tuesdays at St. Bernard's Parish at St. Camillus. And if you have something going on at your parish that you want us to include, feel free to email us again at wqph893 at comcast.net. That's wqph893 at comcast.net. And we'll be happy to include it here and perhaps even do a thing for our community calendar. So something worthwhile. This is Peter and Jemmy, host of Your Prayer Intentions, every Saturday here on 89.3 WQPH Shirley Fitchburg. Do you have a prayer request that you'd like me to pray for or perhaps the whole community? Well, include that prayer request in an email. Specify if you want it on air or off and email that prayer request to WQPH. 893 at comcast.net let me repeat that it's wqph893 at comcast.net and we will pray for you if you have an urgent request that you're looking for immediate prayer tweet me directly at the tech guy blog on twitter or the tech guy blog on gab god bless you